the ninth Fast and Furious movie. It's just that their characters, Hobbs and Shaw from Fate of the Furious, were probably one of the best things about that movie. And they had so much chemistry together that by the time that they had started dropping trailers for that, like the minute you see them go at each other in the prison, people were screaming spin off. Like it just seems like those two characters would work well together in a future movie. So, of course, The Rock, who has really big pull at the studio and he's just a really big box office draw for people, is like, hell yeah, I'll do a spin off with Jason Statham. Jason Statham has his own giant fandom. If you didn't see The Meg, that movie did gangbusters regardless of what you thought of the quality of the story like people will just show up to see Jason Statham kick ass in movies regardless of what the movie is actually about same thing for The Rock so of course they were going to do Hobbs and Shaw there were all these reports of drama behind the scenes when they were talking about the spinoff and Vin Diesel altering cuts of Fast and Furious 8 so that there wasn't as much rock in it and there were some of the other stars of the franchise like Tyrese that were really upset that The Rock was trying to do a spinoff of their main franchise. It's hard to tell how much of that's real and actors are actually upset with each other or if it's all fake beef in the name of publicity. Like The Rock comes from the world of wrestling where you have professional beefs with other characters as part of a story arc so it's like eventually Eventually they face off in the ring and they deal with the beef. But the whole deal with this movie is, is that Idris Elba gets to be the worst bad guy of the franchise so far. Like that's the whole idea is like every time they roll out a new bad guy, like Jason Statham's Shaw character used to be the villain. He's actually the guy that killed Han at the end of Fast and Furious Tokyo Drift. They addressed that a little bit, but that was one of the narrative ways that they really got fans to hate his character when he first debuted. Like, oh, he's a threatening villain because he killed this character that we all love so much. That was Fast and Furious 7. Fast and Furious 8 was where they turned him into the anti-hero, like, we'll pardon you of your crimes if you help us take down this even worse villain who was Charlize Theron's character. The turns of the movie are pretty easy to figure out, but from this footage, if you didn't recognize her, Vanessa Kirby is coming in from the Mission Impossible franchise. She was the White Widow during that movie. She was the daughter of the Maxine character from the first Mission Impossible movie, so it was just paying off a really big Easter egg in a brand new character. And she was pretty fantastic. She was also in The Crown. She did an amazing job, so she's a great actress, so of course they wanted to bring her into the Fast and Furious franchise. But if you didn't hear about it when she was initially cast, she's actually playing the sister of Shaw's character. So I guess that that means she's probably going to wind up banging the Rock's character. That just seems like something that he would do to Shaw to spite him because the whole trailer is them being forced to work together and then playing on those comedic moments. Like, I hate you so much. I can't believe that we're being forced to work together. So I guess we might as well make the best of it. So they probably find some common ground by the end of the film. Then surprise twist, he winds up sleeping with his sister, which makes him hate him again. And they just carry it forward into the next film. But it seems like what's going on is that she's part of the family business. Remember, their mother, Jason Statham and Vanessa Kirby's mother in the franchise is played by Helen Mirren. She was in Fast 8. She helped out Vin Diesel's character briefly, but she paid reference to Shaw. So they were just like this big Shaw family within the world of Fast and Furious now. And Vanessa Kirby is now his sister, just the newest part of that. Of course, she's a badass. I don't think you're allowed to bring in a new family member like that in a movie like this without them being some crazy level badass. But the rest of the trailer mostly hypes up what's going on with Idris Elba's villain character. Like it tries to say that he's invincible. He says he's bulletproof. That's obviously because he has some crazy medical technology that heals him up because you see all those scars on his back with his special machine stitching him right here. And it just seems like he has a lot of really stealth military tech built into that special black suit that he's wearing. Like they spend the whole trailer talking about how big The Rock is and how crazy he is. Then he punches him right across frame like holy crap how did Idris Elba do that? He's probably just got one of those special military frames built in with all those metal parts that enhance the strength of soldiers. They've actually started to make those for the military. It's sort of like wearing a miniature version of a mech underneath your clothing. It basically multiplies your strength many, many fold. So that's why it seems like he's invincible, just because he's got all this special metal tech underneath his clothing that's enhancing his strength. There's something about The Rock jumping off of buildings in Fast and Furious movies. Like they drove the car across two buildings. I think that was during Fast 7. There's typically a shot like that in all the trailers. In this, they obviously because it's Hobbs and Shaw, they just play on the comedy of that. So The Rock jumps over the side and Jason Statham takes the elevator while he's cursing him out, slowly going down. I don't know how self-contained this is supposed to be, so I don't know if they're actually going to have cameos from the other Fast and Furious franchise members, but based on the behind the scenes beefs that everyone's talking about, it sounds like it will not. Like it'll be relatively self-contained and they'll just verbally reference what happened during Fast 8 and then have some teaser that'll imply that they'll be coming back in the next Fast and Furious movie. 
I think the beauty largely of films like this is that you don't necessarily need to know what the plot is to enjoy it. Like it doesn't necessarily need to make sense because they know exactly who their audience is. They know exactly what they want. So they give it to them. And that's why the franchise has become so popular. Like they just found their audience like, okay, this is the kind of movie that you want. So we're just going to keep giving that to you, which is why the franchise has had so much longevity. When it turned from more of a movie about cars in the early Fast and Furious movie to more of a big action roller coaster film. Let me know what you think about all this. I think also the beauty of the Rocks movies is that separately, like he has his own genre in and of himself. He's sort of like the new Schwarzenegger. Like, you know exactly what kind of movie you're going to get when you go to see a movie with the Rock in it. What will be happening later this weekend is that there was a new Captain Marvel Super Bowl trailer that just dropped. So I'll do a video for that next. And then there'll be Avengers Endgame this weekend, I believe. Maybe a Game of Thrones Season 8 trailer and then a couple big Disney trailers. So leave all your requests in the comments below. While you wait for everything, click here for that brand new Captain Marvel trailer and click here to find out why Ben Affleck left the Batman role. Thank you so much for watching. Everybody stay awesome. I'll see you guys tonight.